Okay, so back to the original function. I'm not going to write out all the details like I did last time. Look what we did last time, okay? Here's the factored form. If x is less than negative 3, what can you tell me about x minus 3? Is it positive or negative? It's negative, right? What can you tell me about x plus 2? X is less than negative 3. Is x plus 2 positive or negative? Positive. Negative, right? So this is negative, this is negative, right? Yeah. And if x is less than negative 3, what about x plus 3? Pick a number less than negative 3. What do you get? Negative 4. Negative 4 gives you negative 1, right? Negative, negative, negative. Okay? It's negative on this interval, right? Okay. Now between negative three and negative two, at least one of these factors changes sign when x goes from less than negative three to more than negative three, right? Which one changes sign? Or is it more than one? Turns out that x plus 3 changes sign. Okay? And you could figure that out by just like, okay, let's say x is negative 2 and a half. Right? Negative 2 and a half minus 3, positive or negative? Clearly negative, right? Negative 2 and a half plus 2. Now that's negative a half. That's negative. Negative 2 and a half plus 3. Positive. That's positive. That's a half, right? So I don't have room to write NEG or POS, but I'll just say negative times negative times negative times positive equals positive, right? The function's positive between here and here. Okay, what about between here and here? Well, by what I said here, and by what I hope you understand from the arithmetic of what we did last time, should be pretty clear that we can pick any number between here and here and plug it in, right? And we don't actually have to calculate it. Once we write it down and see what it is, we can tell whether the thing's positive or negative, right? Okay, what's an easy number to use? I'd use zero, but negative one would be okay too. Zero. Okay? Zero would give you a negative, positive, positive, right? So with negative one, and you can check that out. So Okay, so it's negative, right? Understand what I'm showing you? Understand how to do this? Okay. And then if x is bigger than 3, well, the easiest thing to do is let x equal 10 billion. That was what you were thinking, wasn't it? Okay. If x is 10 billion, what's x minus 3? Positive. Not a whole lot different than 10 billion, is it? <laughs> and about x plus 2? Not a whole lot different than 10 billion. And that's not a whole lot different than 10 billion, right? You know, 10 billion and 2, 10 billion and 3, 999 million, or 9, 9 billion, 999 million, 997. All close, really close to 10 billion, right? Okay? Now you can use any number that's a lot bigger than any of the zeros. You can just go out a bit further from zero than where you are, you know, quite a bit further, just to 10. It's all going to be positive. Anyhow, so we see it's all going to be positive. So multiply three positives, you get a positive. Okay, also, if x is a really big positive number, 
What do you get? You get a really big positive times a really big positive times a really big positive, right? Okay? So... A large positive of x implies a... Way far big, big f of x. <laughs> okay? And also, by what I showed you, that way far big, big f of x is close to x cubed, right? Okay? And then out here, well, you reason it out the same way. If x is a large negative, then you have a large negative times a large negative times a large negative, which is negative, but it's really big. So now we see something about what this graph has to look like. And what it looks like is something very much like this. Okay, Viewed from a long distance, these little wobbles kind of disappear, and it looks just like an x cubed graph. Now we saw that last time, okay? So let's see what we do with these other two examples. <clears throat>